Hello everyone, and welcome back to another mechanism tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll be taking a look at quadrupling your ores using a new type of gas known as hydrogen chloride. We'll take a look at producing brine, converting it into hydrogen chloride, and using it to quadruple your ores. In order to make brine, we need to create a thermal evaporation tower, a multi-block structure and mechanism. This will convert water into brine with heat, a concept we'll look at very soon. For now, let's just go and take a look at the recipes for these components. The thermal evaporation block will make up most of your tower, and it takes about four steel and one copper to make four blocks. Now, for a smaller tower, this isn't really much, but it's going to get really expensive whenever you have a larger design, so expect to be going through lots of steel. The thermal evaporation valve is also necessary to the construction of a tower, allowing for import, input and output. It takes four blocks of advanced and an advanced circuit to make this valve. So, so far, nothing that nothing new that we don't already know how to produce. A little more expensive than that is the controller, but luckily, we don't really need too much of this, just one per tower. It's going to take one control circuit, two control circuits, sorry, one glass plane, one bucket, and five thermal evaporation blocks. So, we have all those blocks, you know, looked at now, but there's also another thing we need to learn to make a thermal evaporation tower. We also need four advanced solar generators for our tower. This is a type of power generator, and you can use these for power, but I'll still recommend wind generators above all else. Nonetheless, we still need them. We'll first need to make some solar panels, well, you don't say, and this is just a crafting component, not an actual generator. That's going to take some glass, some osmium, some redstone, and an enriched alloy. We'll go ahead and make three of those in order to make a solar generator, and that's going to involve three solar panels, two enriched alloys, a piece of iron, some osmium and dust, so make sure you have a crusher on hand, and an energy tablet. We will need four of those to make an advanced solar generator. Whoops, we'll go and fix that just a second. We're going to make four of those with two enriched alloy and three iron ingots. So like I said, you're going to need four of these advanced generators for th per, per thermal tower, so be prepared to do some crafting for these things. So now that we have the components for our tower, let's go ahead and look into building one. The minimum size for a thermal tower is three blocks tall with the corners cut out like this. So for the first layer, it's going to be a four by four thermal blocks. They're going to have another layer, at least one other layer with the middle hollow and at least one valve in the construction of multi-block. Then you're going to have a third ring to finalize it, but the corners cut out like this. And then you're also going to have a controller in the center, which will provide the GUI. And then you'll know whenever it's complete, whenever you place it down and it has red multi-block particles. This is the maximum size of a thermal tower, which is about 18 blocks, so it's going to have a much higher uh, capacity for brine and for heating production. To generate brine, we'll need to pump water into the valve. You can use any method of generating water, but I prefer to use an electric pump to power the thermal tower. When we activate the tower by placing the controller, we'll see a G we'll going to open it up and see a GUI pop up. This left tank here is going to represent how much water we have available to the tower to convert into brine, which the brine will be stored on the right side here. We can quickly see that we have a temperature meter that's going to go ahead and go up as we produce one, and it will continue to go up, albeit very slowly throughout the course of the lifetime of the tower. This will directly influence the speed and efficiency at which the tower can convert water into brine. You can see it's going to go up here, and eventually this may start red or anything, depending on how hot it is. Now, there are a number of factors that can, af that can affect the temperature of your tower. For one, having it be nighttime, like so, will actually begin to lower your temperatures. And look at that, it started raining. Raining, which is what, it was, what I was just about to mention, the rain is also going to affect the times at the temperature rate at which it goes down. We'll go ahead and stop that now. Awfully loud. There we go. The other thing that's gonna affect your tower is going to be putting it into a hot biome like a desert like a mesa or a desert this is why i believe putting your tower into a desert biome is probably the best idea overall because not only are you going to have a negate the penalty for um, rain but you're also going to have higher temperatures for it now if for some reason you can't build it in a desert and you want still want to have pretty high temperatures consider using the resistive heater a resistive heater is a new type of machine that's going to convert energy RF into heat. It's a little bit involved requiring us to make a superheating element, a block we're only going to need for this machine. That's going to be made with some copper ingots, some redstone, and a steel casing. We're going to go and take that over and put it into this recipe with some tin, some redstone, and an energy tablet to make the resistive heater. We can transfer the heat out of the resistive heater by using a thermodynamic conductor pipe. 
And that's just going to be made with some steel ingots, some copper, and it's going to want to make some basic thermodynamic con conductors. But we know that we can upgrade it just like any other pipe like so. So we go over and pop on over to this GUI over here. We're going to see, go ahead and place that real quick. We're going to go ahead and see that we can go in and find GUI. So we'll go ahead and set this to 40. And we'll see that it's not really producing a ton of power necessarily. In fact, we can turn that back on. It's just me making a little bit. And we can actually go ahead and apply some more power if we wanted. And it's going to actually increase how much we're making in temperature wise. If I go right here, we're going to see it's making lots of power. Lots of heat. And there we go. We can keep raising that up. It's going to create more and more heat. That's going to allow us to do that. But I will let you guys know that it's going to actually use a lot more power in this way. And in my case, it's actually reducing my game FPS. It doesn't. It hasn't been super stable with this thing on. So if you're going to use these things, try to have them away in an area away from your base. And like I said, you can use those conductors to transfer heat from the resistive heater, like so, into a valve. I want to cover one more thing before we make some hydrogen chloride. So that is the configurator. The configurator is a small utility tool that allows us to change the way pipes behave. It's made with just an energy tablet. Oops. Made with an energy tablet, some enriched alloy some lapis and a stick and we'll make that so when we take come over here and we want to use the configurator we can go up to a pipe and shift click on it to change push pull or none and back to normal so it's a pretty useful tool for wanting to change inputs which will be we'll need to use if we're going to make this hydrogen chloride so to make hydrogen chloride we need to pump water through the tower like this and depending on the heat it will convert this into brine so we're going to output the brine by using the configurator to change the output. So we're going to pull it out of there. So it's going to suck it all out of there. And we're going to go over here. We're going to go ahead and bring this into the electrolytic separator, as we recall. So it's going to go and split that into sodium and chlorine. You do not need sodium. You can go ahead and void that completely. Sodium is a useless gas mechanism. And we're going to bring that into a new machine called the chemical infuser. This machine allows us to combine two types of gas to make a new gas, in this case being hydrogen chloride. We'll need four enriched alloys, two basic control circuits, two basic gas tanks, and something called a dynamic tank block. The dynamic tank block is pretty simple, just some steel blocks in a bucket. And we will cover this block very soon, as this actually does form another multi-block in the future. But for now, we'll just go ahead and examine this for here. The infuser is like any other mechanism machine with the ability to be upgraded with energy and speed upgrades. But remember that your gas production must match the energy, the infuser speed. We recall how to make hydrogen from the second tutorial with the water of the separator, and we'll go ahead and take that hydrogen from that process now. Connect the separator using pressurized tubes, and the infuser will immediately begin creating hydrogen chloride, as so, which we can output right here at the front of the machine, like so. Now that we have a process to make hydrogen chloride, it really isn't too hard to quadruple your ores. It only involves adding one more step to the tripling ores process, which we learned earlier. It will require a new machine called the chemical injection chamber, which will require four reinforced alloys, two elite circuits, which are pretty simple to make. They're just going to be two reinforced alloys surrounding an advanced circuit, some gold, and also a purification chamber as well. And like any other machine, this can be upgraded with not only speed and energy, but also gas efficiencies as well, and it can have factory upblades applied to it. So we're going to go ahead and just put some ore inside, and that's going to convert it. Take it one second. It's going to you go through the uh, hydrogen chloride we have stored in here. And that's going to go ahead and make four shards. Go take those and place them in here. And that's going to turn these guys into clumps. And we know how to process clumps. It's just going to be the enrichment chamber and later the uh, energized smelter. So that really is all there is to quadrupling ores. The, really the hardest part is going to be making the hydrogen chloride. And so the biggest thing with this is to make sure you have a great process to make hydrogen chloride. Thanks guys for watching once again. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to leave a like and give me a little comment in the uh, tell me what you liked about it. I plan on making more of these videos in the future because I uh, enjoy making them and it seems that people are really learning things from it. I enjoy teaching people. Uh, and if you want to see when my next videos are going to come out, be sure to subscribe and hit that little uh, bell notification next to it, and you'll see whenever my next videos come out. I do plan on making some more content other than Minecraft tutorials in the, in the future. I do plan on doing a um, base reveal of the latest playthrough I did on my own custom mod pack, and maybe some other content down the line. As always, I'll see you guys later. Bye.